السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Praises be to Allah alone We praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one And whomsoever Allah leaves a say None can show him guidance May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad Peace be upon him My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of our program Gardens of the Pious Today's episode is number 393 in the series of Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him. Um, and it will be the second in a study in chapter 157, Babu ma yuqra'u fi salat al janaza the supplication which to be recited during the funeral prayer. The following hadith is a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira and some other companions. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه صلى على جنازة فقال اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا وشاهدنا وغائبنا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتنا بعده The hadith is collected by Imam Tirmidhi May Allah have mercy on him um, Abu Hurairah May Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him once offered the funeral prayer and he said during the funeral prayer the following supplication. So we're studying in the chapter what to be recited. As you all know that many people are reluctant to attend the funeral prayer even though they happen to be in the masjid because they don't know what to say. So in the previous couple episodes we explained how to offer the funeral prayer and we may actually have a quick recap after I share with you the meaning of this magnificent supplication in which the Prophet ﷺ uh, invoked Allah to bless not only the dead person but the entire ummah in a very comprehensive dua and that was after the third takbir so the Prophet ﷺ was heard as saying Allahumma aghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina O oh Allah, forgive the sins of those who are alive among us and those who passed away already. Hayyina wa mayyitina. Wa saghirina wa kabirina. O Allah, forgive the sins of the youngsters among us and those who have reached an old age among us. Wa dhakarina wa unthana. O Allah, have mercy and forgive uh, our sins of our male and our female. O oh Allah, whosoever of us you keep alive, keep him alive, faithful to Islam. And whosoever of us you cause to die, let him die having Iman. O oh Allah, do not deprive us of our word for being patient. And do not subject us to trials after his death. As I said, the hadith is collected by Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi. May Allah have mercy on both of them. So, this is a comprehensive dua. The purpose of the funeral prayer is to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon and forgive the dead person. In many cases, when we offer the funeral prayer, we don't even know the name of the deceased. And sometimes we don't know whether it's he or she. And sometimes there are many and sometimes some are young, some are old. Uh, as you hear, the Mu'azzin 
in Al-Haram awfully for those who attend the prayer in Al-Masjid Al-Haram or in the prophetic masjid in Medina, either visiting for Umrah or Hajj they hear, As-Salatu ala al-Amwati yarhamukumullah. Sometimes when there are many funerals, he doesn't specify whether it's a male or a female, he just says, As-Salatu ala al-Amwati, plural. May Allah have mercy on you. And he doesn't specify young or old unless if they were children under the age of puberty, kids. So he says, As-Salatu ala al-Amwati wal-Atfal. Because while we're making dua, we pray for the adults, those who died after reaching the age of puberty, because now, جَرَ الْقَلَمُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ which means the pen has been recording what they used to do, good or bad. So they need our supplication and our intercision so that if they have done anything which is categorized as evil or sin, our intercession may benefit them during the funeral prayer. As for the minors, the Prophet ﷺ has already indicated in the hadith that the pen which records the human being's actions does not record the deeds of the children under the age of puberty. He said, A child until he or she reaches the age of puberty. So before that, you do good deeds, this is for you. You do bad deeds, they are not being recorded against you. So what is the purpose of offering the funeral prayer then for a youngster or a child? We pray for his or her parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them patience. So, patience. so now this dua is very comprehensive because it covers both the living and the dead from among us, the young and the old, men and women. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in case that some of us are ordained, destined to live or outlive others. So may Allah keep them steadfast on his straight path to live as faithful to the religion of Islam. And those who have died, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to die while in a state of belief and to be faithful as well. Then the last segment is what you normally hear the Imam is saying after the fourth takbir you make this dua. Allahumma la tahrimna ajra wa la taftinna ba'da wa lana wa lah. If it is muscular and singular. O oh Allah, la tahrimna ajra. Deprive us not from the reward of what? For being patient on the calamity of losing our loved one. وَلَا تَفْتِنَّا بَعْدَهُ And do not try us or test us with a calamity or a trial after him. وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلَهُ And forgive us and forgive him. We have learned normally that when you make dua for others, begin by making dua for yourself. غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكْ جَزَانَا وَجَزَاكْ May Allah bless us and you. Uh, may Allah forgive us and you. Okay? We say... Also, when we visit the graveyard, we make this dua. Nasalullah lana wa lakumul afiyah. After we greet the dead people in the Muslim cemetery, we say, We ask Allah to pardon us and you. This is the right order. One more time before we switch to the following hadith, because I love this dua. And by the way, this dua is not limited to be recited only in the funeral prayer. You can simply recite it in your sujood. You can simply recite it if you're giving the khutbah. Uh, with the exception of the last segment. Because it, the last segment. لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتننا بعد This is exclusively in the case of attending the funeral prayer. Upon the death of a loved person. But otherwise. اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وذكرنا وأنثانا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وحاضرنا وغائبنا this is a very comprehensive dua. And there is another privilege of this dua. Every time you make dua for a believer, you get a reward for that. What if you make dua in plural for 10 believers, men and women? You get 10 good deeds and reward for that. What if you say, Allahumma lil muslimina wal muslimat? 
المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات والله فقف all the Muslims men and women those who are living and those who died already guess what an equal number of Muslims those who are still living and those who passed away reward will be deposited in your account so there are simple sayings as well as simple acts but they ensure a huge large volume of reward okay so worship smart the dua again Allahumma ghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina O Allah forgive those who are alive among us and the dead from among us wa saghirina wa kabirina and forgive the young and the old among us wa dhakarina wa unthana and our male and our female wa shahidina wa ghaibina and those who are present and those who are absent اللهم من أحييته منا فأحييه على الإسلام والله سؤبه of us you keep alive keep him alive faithful to the deen of Islam and whosoever you have uh, caused to die let him die having iman may Allah the Almighty accept this dua now making dua is by itself rewarded for because it's an act of worship وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ so there is a divine command in Surah Ghafir your Lord have ordered you to make dua and he promised that if you make dua أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I shall answer your dua and respond to your call then he said إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدُخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ those who do not make dua, those who do not pray and invoke me, they do not do so out of kibr, pride and arrogance. So for them they shall enter hellfire being humiliated and disgraced. Okay, so making dua is a command. And when you do, you will be rewarded for. A lot of people make dua, but not everybody who makes dua really realizes what he is saying in his dua or anticipates the reward for his dua so it becomes some sort of a routine like many other rituals and this is very problematic there comes the role of the following hadith hadith number 937 it's also narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an and collected by Abu Dawood in his sunan may Allah have mercy on him so the hadith says, hadith number 937, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا صليتم على الميت فأخلصوا له الدعاء He said, peace be upon him, when you pray over a dead person, then be sincere in supplicating for him. Be sincere. أخلصوا له في الدعاء. It is not another duty that you do it just for the sake of doing it. Or in order to secure the reward, which is a magnificent reward, um, a mountain similar to the mountain of Uhud, equivalent to the mountain of Uhud, hasanat, good deeds for attending the funeral prayer. And then you have forgotten totally that the purpose of attending the funeral prayer and why there is a word for attending the funeral prayer was to encourage the believers to come together to make dua for this poor person who cannot help himself, who cannot help herself anymore. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, أَخْلِصُوا لَهُ فِي الدُّعَاءِ يعني Be sincere. Be sincere while making dua. Really mean what you're saying. And sincerity requires the attention of the heart. Your heart has to be attentive. You're not just saying it. You really mean it. You know, you understand what it means when you say, Oh Allah, forgive him or her their sins. Oh Allah, if they have done something good, multiply their word for it. And if they have done something bad, erase it totally. Then when you remember that in many a hadith, the messenger of Allah said that, the grave 
would squeeze every person, even the believers. And this squeeze would break one's ribs. So you say, oh Allah, make it easy for him or her in their grave. Make their grave a garden of paradise. Keep them firm at the time of answering the questions. Fill their grave with light and noor. Give them the bishara in their grave. You really mean what you say. Besides that, it, mashallah, that will benefit the dead person. Imagine always when you attend the funeral prayer, whether you happen to be the imam or the ma'mum, that tomorrow, no, maybe today, you'll be the person lying down before people. And if you have a chance to speak, if you are permitted to say a word, you will be calling on those people, please, I beg you, make dua for me. Make sincere dua, make lots of dua. So imagine yourself in the position of a dead person and inspires you to be sincere in your dua. Many ibadat has turned into some sort of rituals. So people do khitam salah while they're checking their messages. Their mind is in reading the message. And uh, or making khitam salah while actually talking to somebody else. Okay? That contradicts the concept of being mindful or having your heart being attentive, heart and mind attentive in what you're saying, which is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please, when it comes to ibadah, whether the citation of the Quran or offering the prayer or the funeral prayer or making dua, do as the Prophet said, akhlisu fi dua. Be sincere while supplicating. The following hadith is another hadith collected by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan and again narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu uh, Hadith number 938 and Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu an an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama fi salati ala al janaza Allahumma anta rabbuha wa anta khalaqtaha wa anta hadaytaha lil islam وأنت قبضت روحها وأنت أعلم بسرها وعلانيتها وقد جئناك شفعاء له فاغفر له الله I love this dua as well before I mention its meaning now how many duas have we studied how many narrations many which means it was not like a single dua that you have to memorize and recite it all the time and many people don't have a chance to attend the funeral prayer but once a year or once every few years. So even if they memorize it, it is not something that they say it on a regular basis. Keep in mind that vast majority of Muslims do not know Arabic necessarily. So if you do not have a chance to know any of these supplications by the heart, at least by the meaning. So let's learn the meaning of this beautiful supplication that the Prophet ﷺ recited while offering the funeral prayer for one of the Sahaba who passed away. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma anta rabbuha. O oh Allah, you are its Lord. Anta khalaqtaha. You created it. Anta hadaytaha lil Islam. You guided it to Islam. Anta qabadta ruhaha. You have taken its life back. Wa anta a'lamu bisirriha wa alaniyatiha. And you and only you know best its inside and outer condition. We've come as shufa'a, plural of shafi'a from shafa'a, which means we've come as intercessors. So forgive him. This is a, a, pure, a beautiful supplication, and obviously you need to change the pronoun. Let's say that. It's she. Then, فَاغْفِرْ لَهَا وَقَدْ جِئْنَاكَ شُفَعَاءَ لَهَا We've come as intercessors for her. So forgive her. What if they are plural? Then, we have come as intercessors for them. So forgive them their sins. The following hadith um, is also narrated by Abu Hurairah. رضي الله عنه أن واسلة ابن الأسقع may Allah be pleased with him حديث number 939 
قال صلى بنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على رجل من المسلمين فسمعته يقول اللهم إن فلان ابن فلان في ذمتك وحبل جوارك فقه فتنة القبر وعذاب النار وأنت أهل الوفاء والحمد اللهم فاغفر له وارحمه إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم Okay So what is this supplication this time that Abu Huraira and Wasilat ibn al-Asqa heard the Messenger of Allah supplicating uh, for a dead person? What did he say? He said, O oh Allah, so and so, the son of so and so, Fulan ibn Fulan. Okay. Now, maybe you know the name of the person. You know that Muhammad, the son of Salah. Muhammad ibn Salah or Muhammad ibn Abdullah or Fatima bint Muhammad you mention the name of the dead person and the name of his father this person is now in your protection and inside the surroundings of your refuge Allah so please safeguard him from the trial of the grave and the punishment of hell فقه فتنة القبر وعذاب النار وأنت أهل الوفاء والحمد Oh Allah you keep your promise and you deserve to be praised Oh Allah اغفر له وارحمه forgive him and have mercy on him إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم you are indeed the oft forgiving the most merciful now brothers and sisters the hadith says you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the dead person from fitnat al-qabr. What is fitnat al-qabr? And fitnat al-qabr is uh, something which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek refuge with Allah against it, the trial of the grave, in every prayer after he would recite at tashahud and before making taslim, the last segment of the prayer. He would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wa al-mamat wa fitnat al-masih al-dajjal. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adhaab fi al-nar wa a'adhaab fi al-qabr. The torment of the grave and the fitna of the grave it begins with the trial of the grave. It begins with the questioning about his faith, his religion, and whether he believed in Prophet Muhammad or not. And based on that, the future will be determined whether the person would have his grave a garden of heaven or similar to a pit in hellfire. So it's a big fitna. It's a big trial. Asking Allah to protect you against that and how often the Prophet Sallallahu used to do that, it confirms with no doubt that when people enter their graves, they do not just sit there until they decay and that's it. No, nay, rather the grave becomes very much similar to their fate after resurrection and a small representation of what will happen after the day of judgment. Allah the Almighty said in Surah Ghafir about the Pharaoh after he has been drowned that النار يعرضون عليها غدوا وعشية ويوم تقوم الساعة so even though the Pharaoh and his hosts were not buried in a grave because they were drowned and Allah the Almighty flushed out the body of the Pharaoh and the, the, the mummy is not buried in a grave but Allah the Almighty gave them the same condition even if they were swallowed by the fish that is known as Hayatul Barzakh brothers and sisters وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ that is the ayah of Surah Al-Mu'minun when the people after death they realize that they were wrong they were all wrong and they came to realize the truth so they ask Allah the Almighty to send them back to life in order to behave in order to believe in order to be better so Allah the Almighty says no there is no such return 
Rather, women were even barzakhun. There is a barrier that prevents them from coming back to life until the day of resurrection. So whether the person is buried in an actual grave or in a box, in a casket, or his body was uh, cremated, then the dust was thrown on a windy day, each and every single atom of his body will be treated as an entire body. And you can ask yourself the same question. Okay, cool. The person will suffer for a week or two, a month or two until the body decays and disintegrates and nothing remains out of the body. You're talking about the one who created you from the scratch when there was nothing out of you. Okay? So he is able to do that. Similar to the guy in the sound hadith in one of the nations before us who requested from his sons who loved him so much that if I die, just burn my body and wait until it's a windy day, take the dust of my body and throw it in the stream on a windy day. They did exactly as he requested from them. And as they did, you Almighty Allah gathered and collected every atom of his body, then reassembled him. And he said, Abdi, why did you do that? Why did you ask your children to criminate your body and burn you and all of that? He said, out of fear of you, because I was afraid if you happen to capture me, I will be in big trouble. So the Prophet wasallam said so, and he indicated that the body was reassembled because we're not talking about biochemistry here. We're not talking about anatomy and physics, we're talking about the creator. So each and every person after death, they are not in a state of sleep or rest until the day of judgment, they're doing nothing. No, they're either being rewarded or being punished in their graves. May Allah make us of the first category. So that's why we say, فَقِهِ فِتْنَةَ الْقَبْرِ وَقِهِ عَذَابَ النَّارِ Protect him again as a child of the grave and protect him and safeguard him again is the torment of hellfire. We not in all these supplications, brothers and sisters, that all the invocations must praise the Almighty Allah, admire Him and sanctify Him or um, exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are, you know, essential components of a dua to be accepted. We'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah with some more ahadith in this regard, so please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Let me remind you with our phone numbers and contact informations, area code 002-01-005469323, alternatively area code 002-023855132, uh, the email address is gardens at huda.tv, and uh, we will take another hadith which will be the last in this chapter. Hadith which is collected by Al-Hakim, but this hadith before we discuss it, it's a weak hadith. And it will not be establishing a new hukm or anything, so that's why we're studying it. Hadith number 940. An Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa radiyallahu anhuma, annahu kabbara ala janazat ibnati lahu arba'a takbirat, taqama ba'da arrabi'ati, قدر ما بين التكبيرتين يستغفر لها ويدعو ثم قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصنع هكذا وفي رواية كبر أربعا فمكث ساعة حتى ظننت أنه سيكبر خمسا ثم سلم عن يمينه وعن شماله فلما انصرف قلنا له ما هذا؟ فقال إني لا أزيدكم على ما رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصنع أو هكذا صنع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Okay, so this hadith, which as I said is is a weak hadith, 
It's about one of the companions, Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa. May Allah be, be, be pleased with him and his father. His father was a companion too. One of his daughters died. So he attended the funeral prayer and he led the prayer. And what he did is he prayed four takbirat as usual. We say that there are some narrations, four, five, or six, and they're all about making dua for the dead person. After making the fourth takbir, he did not make salam immediately. Rather, he slowed down. And the time between the takbir and making salam was as long as the time between each two takbirat. So he was making dua for his daughter after the fourth takbir as well. And he was seeking forgiveness for her. Then he said, the Prophet ﷺ used to do that. And in the other narration, he said, this is what the Prophet ﷺ used to do, and I didn't do anything extra. And it seems like he wanted to revive a practice that some of the people have forgotten about it, which is a dua or making supplication in the prayer for the dead person is not only after the third takbir. No, after the third and after the fourth takbir. And uh, many people, once they make the fourth takbir, they make taslim immediately. We said you can make dua after the fourth takbir for the dead person and for his family, for yourself, and for your family, and for the entire ummah. And then after you finish, you can make salam once only to the right, or if you make salam to the right and to the left, both are narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And especially at the time of death and attending the funeral prayer, we should set aside the differences. Even if it is according to your madhab that I only pray one uh, salam. You enter the masjid and you know everybody here have no clue about this practice. They pray and they make the salam to the right and to the left. So it would be odd. You should avoid that. You should avoid raising differences, especially in a moment like that. And especially when you know that both have been narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The following chapter is chapter number 158, which is known as Babu al-Isra'i bil janaza um, hastening in burying a dead person the first hadith is a sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity narrated by both Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim may Allah have mercy on them عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أسرعوا بالجنازة فإن تك صالحة فخير تقدمونها إليه وإن تك سوى ذلك فشر تضعونه عن رقابكم In another narration collected by Imam Muslim فخير تقدمونها عليه which the difference is in the pronoun تُقَدِّمُونَهَا إِلَيْهِ or عَلَيْهِ So Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying Hurry up with the dead body for its burial For it is, for if it is pious, you are speeding it to goodness And if it is otherwise, you're laying uh, an evil of your necks yeah, in either case you should hurry in burying the dead person we're talking here of course about believers when they die because otherwise we do not attend the funeral uh, uh, process uh, of a non-believer but the believers also some of them are righteous and some of them are otherwise and some of them happen to be righteous in public, but in the inside, only Allah knew about them or their family members. So for us, they appear as righteous. So in either case, the recommendation is to hurry in burying the dead person. 
hurrying here doesn't mean to run while carrying the jinaza, the box or the casket or the dead person. Some people do run. No. The Prophet وسلم, commanded a sakina, a sakina, tranquility. Be quiet and tranquil, take it easy. So what does hurrying mean? Yani somebody died in the morning. Go ahead and get the burial permit. Make sure that the doctors confirmed his death and issuing the death certificate. Uh, contact somebody to wash the body. They should be righteous people. Conceal what they see of faults or errors or whatever. They do not expose the dead person. You know, a lot of people already have the coffin and the pack of the coffin in their closet. Other people think it's a bad omen, like if they have it, it's a sign that we're going to die. Oh, really? I'm going to die. And you're going to die. And our most beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, died. So do you think that having your coffin really will expedite your death? لا, لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون Once the term is due, they neither stay behind for a moment, nor do they proceed before their due time. You would only die whenever it is time for you to die. It's a good idea to have the coffin, to have the shroud, and to have the comfort and all of that needed. Uh, at least one or two sets in your house, one for uh, a male and one for a female, because the female requires five pieces, in case. And you have handy the phone number of those who are you know, familiar with watching the body. It's also very interesting if you attend a course to learn how to wash the dead body. You never know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Asia from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Asia. Alhamdulillah. Making dua for you, making dua for entire Huda team. May Allah make easy for you and may Allah give barakah to this channel. Amen. And uh, do make dua for me and my family. May Allah Lord bless you and your family. And may Allah enable Ameen. all of us and all the viewers to witness the blessed month of Ramadan while having the best health and iman. Amen. Jazakallah khair. I have two questions. Please. Sheikh, now suppose we are making, uh, we are, uh, I mean, our heart is saying dua, but we are texting a message. Uh, we, we are not talking, we cannot talk, and somebody passed away, and we are texting the message. Is this dua, and is it acceptable? And uh, question number two uh, is regarding that somebody said that you are not supposed to say sabal khay, because this is not from the uh, uh, the, the, the pagans of those times who used to worship the fire, they used to say sabal khay. So do not say that. Jazakallah khay. Jazana wa yakum. Thank you, Sister Asya. Okay, you text in uh, the family of a dead person with the condolence and with the dua does not mean that you've made dua for him. Because a lot of people, they, especially on WhatsApp groups, they cut and paste. The dua is what you intend to supplicate. I don't have to inform this person I'm making dua for you. What counts is whether I'm making dua or not. So I heard that somebody's cousin died. What is his name? Okay. Oh Allah forgive so and so, the son of so and so. That is called dua. Post in a supplication which you did not even read it and you did not invoke it is not actually a dua. It is some sort of condolence and to sign in to show the person that I really care. It doesn't mean that it's a dua. You invoke it, that's a dua. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sister Sarah from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Gardens of the Pious. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Salah, is it okay to use the name Yasin for boys? And I have one more question. Okay. Uh, if, if you're praying Salah, then sometimes your mind just goes in and out of Salah. And when you realize, oh, you were totally thinking something else. And so can you, like, repeat what you were just saying without even thinking, like, you're in touch, touch heard, and could, could you, like, say it all over again or, or not? Okay. Got your questions. Thank you, Sister Sarah, from the KSA. Sabahul Khair. 
Good morning. Masaul khair. Good evening. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you doing? What's up? All of that, these are different forms of greetings. Is it haram to greet somebody by saying good morning? No, it is not haram. Is it limited to certain kind of people or certain faith or religion? No, it is not. But when you say sabah al khair, good morning, you're limiting the goodness to the morning. But when you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, it's a very comprehensive greeting. It's an invocation of peace, mercy, and blessings 24-7, right? Not only in the morning, afternoon, or the evening. So the best greeting, تَحِيَّتُهُمْ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ سَلَامٌ That is the greeting of the people of paradise when they enter it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But if somebody is used to, when I have colleagues in the office and I have uh, non-Muslims who, uh, I would say, good morning, good evening, how are you, and all of that. Uh, my colleague who is a Muslim said, Sabah uh, al-Khair. I said, Sabah al-Khair, Sabah al-Nur, no problem. We shouldn't make things difficult and complicated. It is not the greeting of a certain faith or certain nation. Good morning is a greeting of all people in the morning. And good evening is a greeting of all people in the evening, uh, as you know. So it shouldn't be a problem. Sister Sarah asked about um, if somebody named, or if it is okay to name somebody's son Yasin. Uh, when we studied these chapters of the Quran in correct recitation, we came to realize that Yasin is not confirmed to be a name of Prophet Muhammad. And similarly, Taha. And this is the opinion of the vast majority of the commentators of the Quran. Yes, some say that it is the name of the Prophet or uh, Taha is the name of the Prophet, which is not confirmed, not in a hadith nor in a sound opinion. So you want to name uh, somebody after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Choose Muhammad. I choose Ahmad, Mustafa, Mahmoud. Okay, any of these names. Um, because it could be just, you know, uh, three letters like Ta Sim Mim, three letters, Alif Lam Mim. So the Mufassirin said it is similar to the letters in the beginning of the surahs. Ta had two letters, Ta and Ha, you know, to come out of this, choose a name. But if somebody did and named his son Yasin, it is not haram, but it we don't know what it means for sure okay in this program and in ask Huda, wallahi we're trying our best to be fair so we do not present a single view and say this is it and if you say this this is haram because this is my view we're sharing with you the different views of the interpreters of the quran the different madahib and we're assisting you to Make up your mind in the light of the most sound view. Wallahu ta'ala ala alam. She also asked about if somebody was not paying attention in the prayer, lost khushua, can he repeat the supplication again? If a person happened to not know what he said or he whether he said it or not and he wants to repeat it, yes. Also, the guys to repeat in the prayer at large, there is a difference of opinion. Some said, yes, he may repeat the prayer, and some said he can actually make it up by praying the sunnah with khushu' then making khitam al sada And Allah the Almighty says in Ayah number 69, Surah Al-Ankabud, the last verse of the surah, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Mujahada, struggle. I'm trying my best. I'm struggling to maintain khushu' in the salah. So Allah will guide you and will assist you and will make you gain that khushu' in the salah as long as it is in your mind and you're trying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our prayers and I think we'll have to study this hadith insha'Allah one more time about hastening to bury the dead person in the next episode. Until then, I'll leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. رسول الله حبيب الله الله
Lord God is the greatest. The one and only glory to Him. He only humans to be the best and give His best religion to them. Allah, our God is the greatest. The one and only glory to Him. He only humans to be the best. And give his best religion to them So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about it in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price. Oh.